It's my fault. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. Welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. It is the Friday, November 18th edition of the show. I am your host, Gary Seegers. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. Hopefully, everybody is having a wonderful week thus far. It has been a heck of a week for me. Uh, really, really busy. But hey, typically we release this show a little earlier in the week. Uh, yeah, and not so much this time. At least I'm getting it out before the ball games. I like to preview the week as we're heading into it. I ask a lot of questions, and, uh, and then I give my answers, and hopefully you guys will jump into the comments on YouTube uh, or wherever else with your own answers to this. Uh, if you would like to converse with me, obviously, you can do so on Twitter, at GaryWCE, as I mentioned earlier. But yeah, I will talk to anybody. I'm giving out college basketball plays over there, I want to hear from you guys. Uh, is it a good idea to do videos, or should I just release the plays on Twitter like or wherever? And who knows what's going on with Twitter these days. Maybe I'll do Instagram. Who knows? But regardless, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Uh, went 0-8 in college basketball plays. Like, I was 12-6 and 6 before that. And I, I thought it was weird that I had a bunch of edges. Uh, probably just should have sat out yesterday, but man, I saw I saw some numbers and I was like, this could be a really good day. Didn't didn't turn out that way. So regardless. This show is brought to you each and every time out by BetUS. It is America's premier online sports book, America's favorite sports book since 1994. They've been doing it for a very, very long time. If you click the link in the description, you can sign up over there. You don't even have to deposit anything and you will get a fifty dollar free play. How awesome is that? It's not too bad. Not too bad. So go and check it out. Of course, BetUS, it is where the game begins. I host the BetUS College Football Show. If you want my official plays on the week, you can get those on Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Or you can always go back and watch the show or get the BetUS Football Podcast. Uh, those are where my official plays lie. This is where anything goes. I can talk about whatever I really want to, but I give out the official plays over there and, of course, the reasoning behind it. So, Go ahead and check that out. Let's dive into this thing. Let's uh, let's toss on a little mood music. And let's talk about what's happening. Where is college game day going for week 13? I ask this question every week. I give a little bit of a prediction. And in some weeks are obviously easier than others. This coming week for week 13, I think this is very simple. It, Michigan is going to Ohio State. They're both ranked in the top three. I anticipate both of them will remain in the top three. Michigan hosts Illinois this week. Ohio State has to go to Maryland. I don't see either of those teams, both of which are well more than two touchdown favorites. I don't see either of them losing this weekend. So that is where college game day will be. I know they're in Montana this week. I did not predict Montana. Uh but that is, that's where they will end up next week if somehow one of those teams loses, Michigan or Ohio State. You got Notre Dame at USC next week. That one could be very interesting. I tossed on here these next two. Oregon at Oregon State could be interesting. Kansas at Kansas State. Those are two uh, not as big big programs in Oregon State and Kansas that could knock their rival out of championship games, depending upon results of this week, obviously. So, yeah, there's a lot to figure out here. A whole lot to figure out. Uh, curious what is going to happen with Utah and Oregon. Don't know what's going on with Bo Nix, but regardless, we'll, we'll hit on that. So, uh, the prediction, official, is that this bunch, the game day bunch, with Pat McAfee and all of them, will be at Ohio Stadium. So, they are going to Michigan and Ohio State next week. Moving along, the biggest brand games. Who is going to get the highest ratings this weekend? I think the number one game, uh, as ridiculous as this sounds, is going to be Georgia at Kentucky. It is the CBS game this week. I anticipate those brands are big enough. This game will be close enough for long enough that it will average the most viewers. Uh Georgia is number one in the country. Those are two pretty big brands. 
That's what I imagine. Uh, number two, I think, is going to be Illinois at Michigan. It is the early ABC game. The competition there, of course, will be TCU and Baylor. Uh, that's on Fox for Big Noon Kick. But that's that's what I'm envisioning here. So, uh, I've got the number three being USC at UCLA. That is a primetime game on Fox. The Fox primetime games don't seem to draw as well as the Big Noon Kick games. Now, I don't know if that has to do with brands or whatever, but regardless... Uh, I've got USC at UCLA as the number three, even though it might be the most exciting of the weekend. Ohio State at Maryland, I've got number four. Uh, that one, yeah, another another good prime spot. But at, who who wants to see uh, a beating? Like, who wants to see a train wreck? Who knows? Utah at Oregon, I've got at number five. This one is a 10.30 p.m. Eastern time game. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting. However, uh I don't think there's going to be a lot of people up watching that one late, but I could be completely wrong. Oklahoma State at Oklahoma. That's the ABC primetime game. Two teams with not great records, not a lot of star power, etc. Uh, this is not your dad's Oklahoma team. So, uh, But I do think that they, it will draw a good number of people. I've got TCU at Baylor. Yes, TCU is highly ranked. Yes, Baylor won the Big 12 last year. Still not a lot of national appeal for either of those brands, so I don't envision, uh, even if the game is close and exciting, I don't envision a ton of viewership for that one. So I've got that one at number seven on the list. So, moving along. The most exciting games. Which games will be the closest this weekend? Here's what I got. I got four of them. Number one, I've got TCU at Baylor. I think that this one could end up being an absolute dogfight. TCU, nine straight weeks without a bye. There's a lot to this one. Baylor would love nothing more than to upset TCU in this spot because TCU, as bad as they were last year, they are the team that upset Baylor. Uh, yeah, it like knocked them basically out of the playoff because if Baylor had won that game and then won the Big 12, they would have been the four seed over Cincinnati. At facts are facts. Just is what it is. So, yes, I think that one could be very exciting. I think it could be very, very close, especially early with a road game for TCU. USC at UCLA. You're going to see a ton of huge plays here. I know how much it sucks that uh, the running back for uh, for USC is out. Right? Travis Dye has been awesome. Uh, but that one, like, I think, I think that Austin Jones is still going to be pretty good. I, I expect a ton of points here. I think these two teams are going to be going up and down the field on each other. Uh, I think it could be very, very exciting. Uh, another for most exciting games, the number three one I've got here, Ka Texas at Kansas. Yeah, Texas is a nine-point favorite, but man, you want to talk about a debacle last week against TCU. I mean, that was just, that was putrid. It was awful. So, yeah, that, that definitely did not work out well. Um, it just, just rough. Just rough. Uh, and and how, how are they going to be motivated for this game at Kansas? I know that they lost to Kansas last year, so there should be some motivation here. Uh, if B. John Robinson is good, he should be able to run all over this Kansas defense. But Kansas still has Leipold. He hadn't left the program yet. He can scheme with the best of them. He and that offensive coordinator can get guys open. Uh, I know Jason Bean might be uh, out for this game, but from... Everything that I'm hearing, it looks like Jalen Daniels will be back for this one. And that could get real, real interesting, right? So, uh, Texas at Kansas, I think, could be uh, one of the most exciting games of the weekend. And then I've got Ole Miss at Arkansas. It's a night game. It's on the SEC Network. This one is interesting, right? This one, it's a two-and-a-half point spread in favor of Ole Miss. How do you get back off the mat after losing at home to Alabama? Like, that was the one that everybody had circled. You're coming off of a bye. You think you can finally upset Alabama. They are vulnerable. They are weak. And you cannot get it done. So, does Ole Miss just come out and lay an egg? Mm. I mean, Arkansas put up a really good defensive effort, and it looks like K.J. Jefferson is going to be back. I think this one could be really exciting. I think it could be lower scoring than people think, uh, but we'll we'll see. I think that total is in, like, the mid-60s. Uh, I think 
I think you could end up seeing it's supposed to be cold. Like cold, cold in Fayetteville. So we'll see. Which teams have the most to gain and the most to lose? It's a very interesting question, obviously. Uh, I think the two games in the Pac-12 are the, the biggest things for this particular question. USC, UCLA, I mean, both are vying for a conference championship. At UCLA probably needs a little bit more help. But, uh, yeah, USC, UCLA, like USC is the only team left in the Pac-12 that has a playoff shot, I believe. At least based on rankings, right? UCLA, on the other hand, uh, you you would like to kind of build on what you did against USC last year. I mean, you put 60-plus points on them, uh, beat them by four touchdowns. I mean, it was just a, a beating. And you want to maintain that control of the L.A. market now that the new guy is in Lincoln Riley, right? Uh, you want to be able to swip, uh, excuse me, swipe some of those uh, L.A. recruits, and this would be the way to do it. So get you another win here, especially at home in the Rose Bowl. Uh, show that you own L.A. That would be that, That's what this boils down to. Utah and Oregon. Utah only has one loss in the Pac-12. Oregon only one loss in the Pac-12. The winner of this is probably going to end up in the Pac-12 title game. Uh, what other stakes does there need to be, right? Oregon, this is obviously a revenge spot for getting absolutely housed twice last year. Uh, 38 to 10, 38 to 7 in both games against Utah last year. Uh, but this ain't the same Utah defense. It is just certainly not. But I, if Bo Nix does play, the matchup between him and Cam Rising is going to be very, very fun to watch. TCU and Baylor. Again, I mentioned it before. TCU vying for a playoff spot. They've already got their Big 12 title uh, spot wrapped up. Baylor is, for all intents and purposes, uh, out of that. So, Baylor's Super Bowl is going to be this weekend. Now, does Blake Shapin have enough in the tank to get anything done against them? Eh, we will see. We will see. Uh, Baylor certainly has the the defensive line to be able to get something done. Um, but we'll see. I mean, this, this TCU offense has slowed down considerably over the past five weeks. So, uh, yeah, rivalry game. I think it's it, uh, this one, both sides have a lot to play for here. A whole lot to play for. Illinois has the most to gain this week uh, by playing at Michigan. If they can find a way to win, now obviously it looks like they may not have Chase Brown. Who knows? Uh, or he may give it a go and just not be 100%. Regardless, you don't have a fully healthy Chase Brown, and he is your superstar on offense. At the defense, there's been some holes, but I don't know if Michigan is capable of uh, taking advantage of them. This Michigan passing game has a lot to prove. If Illinois can just stack the box and, and you know try and slow them down, I think they might have a shot here. Uh, but the issue is that Illinois was leading the Big Ten West, and they have lost the last two weeks to Big Ten teams. And now they are in a four-way tie atop the lead of the Big Ten West. You lose this one, you might be eliminated. I mean, that is it's going to be rough. So... We'll see what happens, but uh, but Illinois has the most to gain. Uh, who has the most to lose? Uh, Texas. Going to Kansas. This is a rough, rough spot. You come off a prime time spot against the number four team in the country, you are favored by a touchdown, and your offense puts up three total points. Not good. Not good. You had a ton of recruits that were at that game in person watching you not be able to put up 200 yards of offense on TCU, who has not exactly been a defensive juggernaut this year. I mean, there's been a lot of teams that have been able to put up points on TCU, and Texas was not able to put up any touchdowns. The only TD for Texas was a scoop and score late in the ballgame. So, yeah, you follow up a loss to TCU by going to Kansas and losing? Yeah, things could get real hairy for Steve Sarkeesian there in just his second year. I understand what he's trying to build, but man, yeah, that's a pretty big one. Uh, the last one that I put on here for most to gain or most to lose is uh, Troy. Troy hosts Louisiana Monroe. Louisiana Monroe has actually been pretty good at covering spreads, and not only covering spreads, winning outright as a 10-plus point dog. They've done it three times in the last seven 
uh, attempts. So, yeah, I, something to pay attention to with this is nobody's really giving Terry Bowden's bunch a whole lot of credit. Uh, but Troy has to win out. They have to win their final two games in order to win the Sunbelt West. If they do that, this team will have gone 10-2 and two one year after firing Chip Lindsey. That's crazy. John Sumrall is going to get some looks in his first season to move up to the big leagues. Um, I don't know if he does it, but regardless, I mean, he moves over from Kentucky, takes over this Troy program, immediately writes the ship, and that defense is serious. So Troy has to win this game. Does not matter the spread. Does not matter the margin. Win this game by one point, you're doing all right. So uh, let's look at the, you know what? We are going to knock this thing out right quick. On the other side, the most likely 10-plus point underdogs and outright winners. Let's check out some things you should know about. College football is back, and BetUS TV has you covered. Every Tuesday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, we've got expert game analysis to help you make informed decisions before kickoff, only on the BetUS TV College Football Channel. Visit winningcureseverything.com to find everything you need to know about us, including full shows in video or podcast form, gambling picks, merch, the gear we use, and more. If you want more content from me, Gary, visit betustv.com. I host the How to Gamble on Sports show and, from August through January, the BetUS College Football Show. You can subscribe to both on YouTube. If you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or whatever's your favorite podcast app. And if your app allows it, leave a five-star written review. Visit the Winning Cures Everything web store to get all kinds of football shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and more. Visit winningcureseverything.com slash store to see what all we've added. And now, back to the show. All right. Which teams are the most likely 10-plus point underdogs that could win outright this Saturday for week number 12? That's a very good question. Um, and I've got a few options here. Got a few options. We, we've hit on a couple of them here lately. Navy is a 15-and-a-half point underdog at Central Florida. UCF coming back home after two straight, uh, very tight road wins over Memphis and uh, Tulane. Last week, Tulane, massive game. Massive game last week. And you come back home, you think this should be an easy win. Navy continues to fight. All the way until the end of the ballgame. Something to pay attention to. Something to pay attention to. So, I think Navy, it it would take a lot, but I think they could pull that off. Remember, this was like a three-point ballgame last year. UConn. A 10-point underdog to Army. Army is 3-6 and six on the year thus far. Uh, not great. UConn already bowl eligible, uh, but this team has been fighting like dogs. Like, they are they are ravenous. Uh, I love what UConn's doing right now. Uh, Jim Moore Jr. has done a complete turnaround to that program. So, uh, I think UConn could certainly pull off an upset here. I did mention this one earlier. Louisiana Monroe... Is a 14-and-a-half point dog at Troy. Look, Troy was a three-touchdown favorite over ULM last year, and they lost the game at 29-16. to it, it could happen again. Obviously, there's a lot more for Troy to play for this time. But Terry Bowden and that quarterback, Chandler Rogers, have been known to do this. Like, they, they just upset uh, Georgia State last week as a two-touchdown underdog. So, I mean, it, it's not out of the realm of possibilities. Uh, but Louisiana Monroe, a, a little better than people are giving them credit for. The numbers, the advanced analytics don't necessarily say it, but they, they find a way to play hard. Cincy heading to Temple. Temple, a 17-point home underdog. EJ Warner has been playing really, really well. This offense is playing incredibly well, especially over the past two weeks. They have not punted. In two weeks, that's right, two straight games that the offense has been so good, and and granted, it was against South Florida, which is a team that played Cincy to a four-point game, but it was against South Florida and Houston. That's how well the offense was moving the ball. They did not have to punt two straight weeks. 
Now they play against the Cincy defense that, uh, I'll be honest, is not great. Uh, they have they have not been uh, a really good defense this year. Uh, they still got the talent. It's just not all put together yet. So uh, Temple, not crazy to think about it. This team had a lot of success against Cincinnati up until last year. So something to pay attention to. Boise is headed to Wyoming. And every single sign would point to Boise being able to just wipe the floor with this bunch. Uh, their quarterback might be out with a concussion. They lost a wide receiver last week. and He was like number five on the team in catches. But regardless, it's more depth. They lost a, a starting cornerback, I believe. They lost a starting defensive tackle. Like, Wyoming is feeling it as far as injuries are concerned. And yet, Craig Bowl is 5-3 and three, straight up as a 10-plus point dog at home in the last eight in that spot. Not just covering, which they are 6-2 and two against the number, uh, but they are 5-3 and three straight up as a 10-plus point underdog at home. That is crazy. They wildly overperform expectations. The backup quarterback, uh, Clemens, played really well for them against Colorado State, coming in in mop-up duty. Not mop-up duty, but uh, to come back and win the ball game. Right? They only won the game 14-13. to Andrew Peasley did not play well against Colorado State. I think this guy might be better. Just throwing it out there. So, um, so that's the five that I've got for the most likely 10-plus point underdog outright winners. Let's talk about this. This will be the last one before we get out of here. You guys have been fantastic. Like the video for me if you would. Share it out. Tell your friends about it. All that good stuff. Um, listen to the podcast. Subscribe. All that good stuff. The G5 games of the week. I've only got two of them here. The first one, Boise State at Wyoming. I mentioned all the reasons why this should be the G5 game of the week. Um, I'm not going to put UConn and Army. I'm not going to put Navy UCF. I'm not going to put uh, Cincy Temple. Like all that kind of stuff, right? But Boise State and Wyoming. The winner of this uh, effectively wins the Mountain West Conference, or the Mountain West whatever division. The Mountain Division, I believe. The Mountain Division, yes. I mean, that's pretty big stakes, right? Wyoming looked completely lifeless at the beginning of this season. It looked like this roster was complete garbage in a loss to Illinois, 38-6. to And yet they turned that thing around. They are 7-2 and two since that loss. That's right. They are 7-3 and three overall in the season. So this team is not bad. The other one, South Alabama at Southern Miss. Southern Miss has been very tricky this year to figure out exactly what they are. Their defense is really, really good. The offense, uh, certainly there have been peaks and valleys, right? Will Hall, what he's doing is awesome. I love what Will Hall is building in Hattiesburg. Uh, he's not fully there yet. This is about a seven and a half point spread here. Um, but South Alabama, what Kane Womack is doing, Womack, Womack, however you say it, uh, he has really built this team into uh, somewhat of a Sunbelt powerhouse. Like, they are really, really good on defense. And Carter Bradley, the quarterback, is doing some fantastic things on offense, throwing the football around. Um, they are right there with Troy. They lost to Troy 10-6. to They are right there in that Sunbelt West division. They have to continue winning, and you got to hope that Troy drops one somewhere. Now, Troy plays a couple of easy uh, teams. Going on the road to Hattiesburg is not easy. So this should be a really, really fun game, a very interesting game. There's a lot of stakes on this one. A lot of stakes on this. So those are my two G5 games of the week. Boise State at Wyoming, South Alabama at Southern Miss. Now let me go on and tell you. Go over to winningcureseverything.com, enter in the picks contest. The winner each week gets a $25 Amazon gift card. After you have won, reach out to me because some of these emails that people have signed up with uh, I am getting some error messages and whatnot when I try and contact you regarding your prizes. So reach out to me or toss in your Twitter handle or whatever. Uh, but you can email me, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or just DM me at GaryWCE on Twitter. Knock that out. But yes, go and enter in the picks contest. We have a lot of fun doing that. Uh, at least going to do it through the regular season. I might do like a bowl contest. We'll see. Might be week to week, but we'll, we'll see what ends up happening. Along with that, go check out Valtimarie Surf Company. 
incredible clothing line. The guys are awesome. There's a link in the description. You can use the promo code Gary10 to get a 10% uh, discount on your order. So go and check them out. Uh, it's Collegiate Town Surf Company shirts. Fantastic stuff. These guys are awesome. Very, very awesome. Uh, with that said, of course, go and check out BetUS. Sign up for the $50 free play. If you have not already signed up at BetUS, it is very easy to do. You do not have to make a deposit. All you got to do is sign up with the user account. Go and check it out. And make sure that you go and watch the BetUS College Football Show every Tuesday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Next week, I think it's only going to be on Tuesday, just a longer show than usual. It is Thanksgiving week. Uh, our crew and staff would like to go and visit family, and I understand that. So that is the way that it goes. <sighs> Good gracious. What a week it has been. The regular uh, regular season is winding down. Make sure and tune in on Sunday morning for the college football week that was the recap, the reaction show. Uh, It's always a lot of fun. It's live. We have a good time with it. So go and check that out. All right, with that said, we are going to get out of here. You guys have been fantastic. Again, like the video, subscribe, tell your friends about it, share it out, all that good stuff. And uh, and yeah, we're going to close this thing out. Take care of yourself, take care of each other, and hopefully all of you took its cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app, and make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE, and the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.